第1弾「グラディウス3」Gradius 3 kicks ass. Though it might not be a one to one port of the 1989 arcade release, this Super Famicom SNES offering is worthy of the title Gradius and clearly stands on its own. Gradius 3 is packed tight with white knuckle gameplay, fantastic level design, and colorful 16 bit artwork. Check out these huge bosses! Check out these bubbles! Check out the slowdown. Yes, Gradius 3 suffers from massive amounts of slowdown, much like its arcade counterpart. You could argue that it's game breaking, but certainly the developers took this into account, right? Well, enter ROM Hacker Vitor, a software engineer who's well known within the SNES ROM hacking scene. Vitor has ported Gradius 3 to use the SNES's SA1 chip. Which is a co processor capable of running at four times the base speed of the SNES's own CPU. Now, check out this comparison footage. By using the SA1, Vitor is capable of offloading certain computations to the co processor, thereby resolving any and all issues of slowdown. The result is a game that now plays buttery smooth. Now, if you own an SD to SNES, you're in luck, as the SA1 has been implemented on the SD to SNES. Now, I can't speak of its accuracy, but it's much less of a headache than making your own cartridge. Which is exactly what we'll be doing today. I'm going to make an exception and use a real donor cartridge to make an authentic, bare metal copy of SA1 Gradius 3 that will now run on real hardware. Let's take the top off and let's get to it. Okay, let's begin by removing our two security screws and pulling the board out. So here we have it. This is the SA1、um, ASIC right here on the board. And this is an SHVC1L5B revision. It's very important to note that because the module that we'll be using is only compatible with this particular mainboard revision. So if you're going to use a donor, I'd recommend that you check to make sure you've got the right mainboard. A for sure way of knowing is to grab something like PGA Tour 96. One, because it's basically a guarantee that you're going to get this revision, and B, nobody gives a s h about golf. Okay, so on to the mod here. Two things that we need to do、uh, in terms of prep work. The first thing that I'd like to do is remove the CR2032 battery and replace it with a coin cell、uh, equivalent. So let's do that. And then we'll talk about the surface mount、uh, MASCROM and what we're going to do next. Let's go. All、set. Now, for small projects like this that aren't going to heat soak or take a lot of energy, I like to use my 858D hot air rework station. I want to set this to around 330 degrees with about 70% airflow. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to come in here first by just applying a little heat, doing a little preheating action, about three inches off the deck here. And again, we're at 330 degrees Celsius with around 70% airflow. And I'm sorry for a lot of the Noise in the background, I can't do much about that. But we'll do this for about another six seconds. The key is to always keep the heat in motion.、Uh, if you want to, you know, avoid delaminating a board like this, always keep the heat in motion. Now we're going to start coming in here and we're, we're going to start our pattern. Okay, we have a soft package here, so we're going to start our pattern. We're going to be very consistent with, with the amount of heat we distribute and with our motions. That is most important. 
So we'll do this for probably another 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds. Nice and easy. Remember, be very consistent with your motions. And while this is heating, I'm going to take my masturbatory tweezers. I'm just going to advance them in. I'm not, I'm not jamming anything in. I'm not forcing them in. I'm just sort of resting them in position here. So when this chip is ready, I don't have to use any force. The tweezers will automatically go underneath and kind of scoop this chip up. That's all we have to do. You can, absolutely use, you can absolutely use a suction device if you have one, but I find this just to be easier for devices like this. So nice and easy with that heat. Start coming in a little closer here. We're about maybe an inch from the deck now. Heating those pins very evenly. Nice thermal distribution here. And so I want to start up. Oh, see, it's moving. See the chip moving? Very evenly. Move this off to the side. Couldn't grab a hold of it. It's hard to do this with a camera in the way. Let me turn off the uh, hot air rework station, but that's it. That's all there is to that. That's a beautiful pull that couldn't have gone any better. So the prep work is done. We've pulled our um, service mount mask ROM off the board. We'll let this cool down for just a bit, but we're going to clean these pads up. We're going to actually use the solder that's here. Uh, but we'll let this cool down and we'll talk about this module and how it works. Now I'm going to add some fresh solder here to my tip. I'll do a few lines of flux on these pads. I'm not going to wick them, we're just going to rework them like this. Beautiful. Let's do the other side. Now, here's the module that's going to make all of this possible. This is the 27C322 adapter for the SA1 mainboard. This was designed by the Real Phoenix. Really cool guy. Um, this is made to interface a big old clunky 27C322 EEPROM into the surface mount footprint. Now, in the last couple of videos, we've outlined dumping cartridges and applying patches. Now, I'm not going to be going through that today, but if you've not seen those, check out my last few videos. Now, we are finished with all of the prep work. We're ready to install our module. As you can see, we have an alignment here in the footprint. We have alignment here on the module, so we know the proper orientation. Okay, that looks perfect. So I'm just going to come in here with my soldering iron, and I'm just going to tack the corners in. Just like that, on that side. Let's come up here to make sure we've got good alignment. I don't think it could look any better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tack in a corner. Just like that. Now, see if I can hold this at an angle so you can see this a little more clearly. I think, uh, I think that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a bead, a flux right down the line. And watch this, I'm going to take my tip and I'm going to load it up very generously, and we're going to do some dragging techniques, just like that. That's loaded up quite nicely, so let's just go down the line. Okay, that looks perfect. Let's do the bottom side now.
perfect fillets, we have excellent joints. Now if you want to, you can take a multimeter and you can just buzz these out to make sure that you have good continuity, but a good visual inspection is typically all you need. This module is completely installed. The only thing remaining is programming our EEPROM and installing it into position. Now as far as programming is concerned, I'm going to be using the FlashCat export with a prototype that will allow me to program 16-bit EEPROMs. It's pretty awesome. The version that'll be available in about a week is much better than the prototype that I'm using, so stick around. I'll have a video on that and some links. Now, I've just used the FlashCat export to program my big and clunky 27C322. We have our window covered, and we are ready to drop this bad boy in. So, one side, the top side, fits through these vias on the module, and the other side needs to cut down flush, because the bottom side pins rest on these pads. So we have a little prep work to do here. I'm just going to take uh, this EEPROM just like so. I'm just going to go down the line. I want to cut the pins. Just the pigtails. Alright, we're ready to rock and roll. So we'll take our module here and we'll first begin just putting those pins in just like that and make sure your alignment is proper as you notice we have some markers here we have some reference designators pay attention to them Well, there you have it, guys. SA1 Gradius 3 running on a real cartridge and on real hardware. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, I made an exception to use a donor cartridge. An SD to SNES is great, but not everyone wants to shell out 200 bucks for the only flash cartridge that pseudo supports SA1. Now, personally, I'm all about accuracy, and there's absolutely no exception to real hardware. Special thanks goes out to The Real Phoenix for making this wonderful little SA1 conversion board, and also, of course, to The Great Vitor for all of his ROM hacking contributions. Let's help each other always by motivating, inspiring, and encouraging. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you next time.